प्रेजेंटेड बाय ईबिक्स कैश हर खुशी के लिए काफी है Hello and welcome you're with us here on business today I'm Abha Bakaya here are the headlines tonight Markets decline for the second straight day Nifty slips below 17900 Sensex falls 300 points Reliance HDFC Bank the top laggards PTM may disappoint investors on listing tomorrow Grey market premium indicates muted listing shares trading at a discount of 20 rupees Anil Agarwal's Vedanta Mulls Group Rejig plans demerger and listing of aluminium, oil and gas and iron and steel companies. Petrol and diesel prices to remain stable in coming months says Petroleum Secretary Tarun Kapoor in an exclusive conversation with Business Today TV excerpts later on the show. And we'll get all your stock queries answered on our special segment Ask Uday. Markets continue to trade range bound today in the absence of any fresh triggers the nifty closing the day down 100 points at 17899 unable to sustain above 18000 sensex ended lower by about 300 points as well just above that psychological 60000 mark broader markets continue to show divergence uh, the s&p bse mid cap down about 2 tenths of a percent small cap index just saw marginal gains those are the top laggards on your screen upl reliance sipla Britannia Axis Bank while on the upside we did see some gains in select uh, auto names Maruti Tata Motors adding uh, gains respectively of about 2% other top gainers were Asian Paints SBI Life and NTPC The three day initial public offering of Go Fashion has opened for public subscription today with the price band fixed at 655 to 690 rupees a share Go Fashion which owns women's wear brand Go Colors witnessed strong demand from retail investors uh, that portion was oversubscribed within minutes of opening on day 1 of the offer Go Fashion IPO has been subscribed 2.46 times led by the retail portion booked 12 times Leading digital payments platform Paytm is all set to make its Dalal Street debut tomorrow but Paytm's parent 197 Communications may not see the big listing pop like Zomato and Nike. Industry watchers don't see fireworks on listing as shares of the company traded at the lowest premium among IPOs currently available for trading in the grey market. Shares are available at a discount of 20 rupees in the unlisted market. Listen in to what Abhay Doshi, founder of unlistedarena.com had to say. The shares of Paytm were seen trading at a discount of rupees 40 in grey market. Paytm IPO was one of talk of the town ever since the company revealed its IPO plan. As the issue opened for the subscription, it got a very tepid response from the investors due to its expensive pricing and the losses incurred on the financial front. Speaking exclusively to Business Today TV, Secretary of the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas Tarun Kapoor said he expects prices of petrol and diesel to remain stable in coming months and that crude prices will definitely cool down post winter. BTTV's associate editor Chetan Bhutani brings you this story. The prices have been reduced finally after a long, long time. Uh, what is the what is the outlook that you have for crude prices, and in India especially, how do you see the prices going for petrol and diesel, sir? So now, if you are asking about the outlook on crude price, the crude price currently is hovering between eighty dollars and eighty five dollars, and uh, uh, what we expect is that uh, it depends on what how uh, severe the winter is. because this time the surge in crude price has been triggered by higher price of coal in in the international market and also of lng or natural gas so the expectation now most of the predictions which have come from from various um, uh, global agencies is that the price would remain at the same level for some time we also expect that and then it will start coming down post winter it will certainly come down but if the winters are not very severe then maybe even earlier it might come down anil agarwal vedanta has said it's mulling a group restructuring that may include demerger and listing of the aluminium 
iron and steel and oil and gas businesses as standalone entities. In a stock exchange filing, the firm said its board had constituted a committee of directors to evaluate and recommend options to restructure the group. The group intends that the aluminium, iron and steel and oil and gas businesses would be housed in standalone listed entities. This is with the objective of simplifying and streamlining corporate structure. Business Today's special issue on India's most valuable companies takes a deep dive into the rankings of the top Indian companies. With growing digitization, the IT sector has outperformed and jumped a few ranks this year. As compared to 2020, Infosys, HCL Tech and Wipro have jumped higher in the list. Business Today's uh, editors take you through the list as we discuss those rankings. Listen in. What's gone up uh, is, of course, uh, uh, the IT pack. Uh, Dilasha, why don't you come in here and share with us some of the uh, key highlights there? Yeah, sure, Abba. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the BT500 ranking, mm. uh, while TCS has remained at uh, the second uh, spot, uh, the other three uh, among the top four IT players uh, have seen a significant improvement in their rankings. For instance, uh, if you look at uh, yeah. Infosys, it has moved up uh, from the sixth position to the fourth position. Uh, then uh, HCL uh, has climbed uh, from a 15th position yeah. to the 12th and uh, uh, Bangalore-based Wipro has uh, gone up from the 19th to the 13th spot. And I think uh, the year 2021, uh, FI 21-22 is going to be another game changer for the IT sector because uh, uh, there is an across-the-board digitalization drive. Uh, that is there and that that's reflected uh, in uh, there's evidence uh, that can be seen in the double digit growth forecast uh, in terms of revenue that these companies are expecting. Then uh, they have doubled their hiring targets uh, for the fiscal to 1,60,000. The deal pipelines are overflowing and um, the RBI data suggests that uh, the services exports were at a 13 quarter high uh, in, uh, uh, in the September quarter. So, uh, looking at all these things, uh, I would say that uh, while last year was great, uh, the current fiscal is going to be even better uh, for the IT players. And as uh, TCS bo boss uh, aptly put it, uh, it is a once in a decade opportunity for the sector. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, sort of where, where do the Adani group of companies fit in on the list? Yes, the Adani group has also been a, a significant, uh, you know, uh, upturn in the market. They've mm. Really, the entire pack, Adani pack, has uh, gone up sa sharply yeah. and significantly. Uh, you know, the, the India's second richest man and his group of companies. So that's been another story in the in the BT five hundred, which we've tracked as a separate story as well in this issue. With crypto fever gripping the world, crypto exchange Crypto.com has done a seven hundred million dollar deal to rebrand the Staples Center in US. Take a look at the contours of the deal, which is believed to be the largest US venue naming rights deal to date. What's in a name? Well, everything when it comes to a deal which has taken the advertising world by storm in the United States. Singapore-based cryptocurrency exchange Crypto.com has taken a $700 million title sponsorship deal that would see the iconic Staples Center, the home court of NBA star LeBron James and his teammates get renamed as Crypto.com Arena from this Christmas Day. The deal to rebrand the 20,000-seat venue comes as digital coins gain wider acceptance. Staples Center is the home of the Los Angeles Lakers and Clippers, among others, since 1999. Crypto.com will replace Staples as the title sponsor of downtown Los Angeles' iconic arena. Analysts believe it to be the largest U.S. venue naming rights deal to date. Crypto.com, a five-year-old company with over 10 million users and nearly 3,000 employees, is a huge player in the emerging world of cryptocurrency. The development comes at a time when a recent high-level meeting by the government in India expressed concerns over attempts to mislead Indian youth through over-promising and non-transparent crypto advertising. Bureau Report, Business Today TV. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, HODL, mining the crypto universe has a lot of new terms that can be quite confusing for beginners. Our tech editor, Ayush Alwadi, breaks it all down for us.
There's this sense of FOMO that's setting in for a lot of us who don't really understand what's really happening in the crypto world. Don't worry, we've got you covered. Here's a starter pack on some crypto lingo that might be useful for your next dinner table conversation. Crypto coins, cryptocurrencies are virtual assets. What it means is there's no tangible asset like a coin or paper. It's just a bunch of code being exchanged on a network or what we call a blockchain. Bitcoin mining, one of the most popular cryptocurrencies is Bitcoin. And the process by which new Bitcoins are created is called mining. Again, not to burst your bubble here, but there's no real caves and mines and stuff. It's just a bunch of complex mathematical puzzles which are solved on high-end computers. And on successful completion, the miner or coder is rewarded with Bitcoin. Dogecoin, what seems to be Elon Musk's favorite cryptocurrency, actually started out as a joke. Well, it uses the popular Doge meme as its logo, and it's no laughing matter now. Dogecoin is actually accepted by some sports teams and companies like SpaceX literally taking it to the moon. To the moon. Speaking of to the moon, when a cryptocurrency's price is experiencing a massive spike, traders and analysts will literally say that this coin is headed to the moon. It's good to be wary though of the risks involved because what goes up to the moon could eventually come back down to earth really soon. HODL Someone misspelled the word hold, but now it's become a crypto term which stands for hold on for dear life. Basically, it means don't sell your crypto. Hoddle it. Weather the storm instead and wait for the good times that probably lie ahead. So there you have it. Geeky lingo that can take you from being a crypto noob to a crypto dude one step at a time. Stay tuned to Business Today for more. With the market scaling new highs every day, we continue to take a few select questions every week to help you understand how to better uh, strategize and make sound investment strategies at a time like this. A question, uh, uh, of course, can be sent in on the number on your screen and we'll take a few every Wednesday. Let's begin. Our first uh, query this week is from Shreya Srivastava. So let's go across. Uh, uh, Shreya is from Kanpur. Listen into her query. Hi Udin, what is your medium and long term view on HDFC Bank? Thank you. Well, HDFC Bank has been one of the bluest of chips, if not the bluest chip in the market for the last 10 or 20 years. People have made a lot of money. But I think it's not gone unnoticed that in the last one year, the stock has been underperforming. I mean, you know, it's probably up 14% over the last one year, while the Nifty has done much better. This is very, very uncharacteristic of the HDFC bank stock. If you look at the recent quarter numbers too, uh, the numbers were not bad at all. Uh, there are clear signs that there is a recovery in loans. Uh, they are back to that 15, 16% kind of level. Asset quality is not bad. Uh, net interest margins remain very steady, but there seems to be some kind of disenchantment about HDFC bank. Now there could be technical factors at play. Because of these large digital unicorns which are doing their IPOs now, there could be money which is being pulled out of some of these old HDFC banks of the world, which is being put into uh, some of these IPOs. That may well be happening. Uh, but even otherwise, there is a feeling, and this is the one important thing in determining whether you should be owning HDFC bank or not, is that after many, many years, we are having a revival in the CapEx cycle. Now, HDFC Bank traditionally, while it also lends to large companies, is seen as a retail bank, retail-focused bank. And therefore, a lot of investors correctly are asking whether it makes sense after many years to look at the ICICIs and the SBIs of the world, which may deliver superior returns to an HDFC Bank or even a Kotak Bank. That is the very material fundamental question, that HDFC Bank remains a very good investment option, but during CapEx cycle recoveries, some of these more corporate facing banks actually tend to deliver better investment returns. So if you own the stock already, you can certainly keep holding it because it is a very strong franchise. But if you're considering what else you could buy, I would submit that you could probably give ICIC and State Bank of India a look because in the foreseeable future, their prospects look as good, if not better than HDFC Bank. Okay, here's Supriya from Faridabad. Uh, let's listen in to this question as well. 
Hi Udayan, what is your view on BPCL? I want to buy for the long term. The short term uh, answer is easier on BPCL because in the next six months, while clearly you know that the divestment process has not taken off in a way that people were expecting, it's gone a bit slow. And I really think one year ago, people would have said that BPCL would be sold ahead of Air India, but Air India has got done, but BPCL, we are nowhere near the completion. So keep your fingers crossed and hope that by March next year, BPCL gets done as well, because that is really the big trigger for the BPCL stock. The hope is that in the next four or five months, the government will get its act on BPCL together and it will go at a significant premium to the current market price. And therefore, it will give a fillip to the BPCL stock for secondary shareholders like you. Uh, even otherwise, uh, the way gross refining margins have been moving up, I think BPCL should be trading at about 500 rupees. It's at about, what, 430-ish now. Uh, but left to itself, without divestment too, the fundamental fair value of BPCL in my book is probably north of 500. But I think everybody's waiting to see what the divestment news is like before taking a more substantial call. Longer term, fossil fuel companies, one cannot be terribly bullish on over a five, seven year period uh, time frame. But I think if you are a if you are thinking of the next six to eight months, it may probably make sense to hold on and see where this divestment news actually, how it pans out. Okay, here's the next one then. Uh, we've got Vedant uh, writing in uh, from Chennai. In fact, uh, let's listen in to his query, Vedant. Hi, what's your view on the EV market in India for the next five years? Say, for example, Tata Power is a company. I have few shares of it and probably will be accumulating more in the future. So where do you see Tata Power 2 in the next five years? Please do let me know. Thank you. Well, Tata Power is trying to move into the space uh, more aggressively. Uh, the one that you're talking about, renewable energy. But, uh, and the off late, there has been a lot of excitement because there was a news article which suggested that BlackRock is picking up a significant stake in its uh, renewable energy subsidiary. I think that may have been the reason why the stock moved as it has. I mean, it's been a one-way move from 140 to 240 in, in Tata Power. And I, I believe that BlackRock has denied that news and so has Tata Power. So maybe that deal is not happening in the near term. If that is the case, I think Tata Power needs to catch its, its breath as a stock. It's had a one-way rally. I think at 240, many of the positives are in the price. And it's probably trading at 40 kind of P multiple in 2023, which is very lofty for a company like Tata Power. One must also realize that a large part of its assets, which generate revenues today, are actually coal-based coal assets. Uh, and given ESG concerns, etc., I think a 40 P is too high a price to pay for Tata Power. Now, of course, if you see it as a renewable energy company over the next five, seven years, then valuations and your perspectives might change. So I don't see the stock actually collapsing from here, but I think some correction and consolidation, time-wise at least, from 240 might be in order given the very sharp run-up that the stock has seen. All right, and here's one from Rajat Verma as well. He's also got a query coming in from a, for a stock in the financial space. Hi, Udyan. I have 2,000 shares of Bajaj Finance at an average price of Rs. 6,000. Should I hold or book profit? Thank you. Well, Bajaj Finance has been an evergreen financial stock, quite like HDFC Bank that we've been talking about. Execution has been absolutely exemplary for that company. And uh, our recent interactions with the management also suggest that they have got a real plan in place uh, to combat the challenge of fintechs. In fact, Bajaj Finance's comprehensive app is out in February and March next year, which will lay out the blueprint for the next level of performance from that company. Uh, it's never um, paid in on hindsight to be selling out the Bajaj Finance stock. It, while it is an expensive stock and continues to be at 10 times price to book, uh, uh, the better decision has always been for investors to accumulate the stock whenever there is a correction because the stock can be volatile. In the past, it has given correction, corrective dips of even up to 20%, 25%. And those are good opportunities to load up on it. But to sell it has always been in the past looked like an unwise decision on Bajaj Finance. So this is one of those names where given the quality of the management uh, and given the constant uh, uh, innovation that the company keeps doing, 
I think it may be one to hold on for the longer term and see how the story pans out over a five to seven year kind of horizon. No recommendation to buy the stock, of course, uh, but uh, uh, I think it's one of those really well-run companies which belong as a core in one's portfolio. That's all the time we have on this edition of Ask Udayan. But if you have any queries, uh, remember, simply send them in. We'll take them every Wednesday. Till then, bye from us.